We will then begin with comments from Dr. Sean Jones. The scholarly communication system is broken, or so goes the argument. At issue is the pain the system has experienced as a result from migrating from a print-only form of communication to a digital web-based platform, and therefore has failed to fully take advantage of what such a digital infrastructure truly has to offer. But what the web-based platform has to offer is not necessarily anything that is new in the way that scholars behave and communicate. Rather, what it has offered is a way to document what were previously and largely the hidden activities of scholars and the informal output they produced. For example, we have long known that scholars have communicated through invisible colleges, that network of communication among scholars that existed outside the formal channels. Scholars also read incredible amounts of material, some of which they cite later on. What the web, including the social web, has offered is a way to highlight those networks, examine the discourse traveling through the web, through them, and gain insight in what scholars read by examining what they bookmark in online databases. The question then is, now that we have this additional information, should we use it to assess the value any given researcher contributes to the overall research? Altmetric arises out of a Altmetric arises out of a history of metrics and used to examine scholarly communication. Chief among these is bibliometrics and its sub-area citation analysis. Bibliometrics was not always used to measure impact, however, although impact-related research had been around. Rather, bibliometrics was used to, for example, shed light, on, shed light on the processes of written communication and the nature and course of development of a discipline. It's been used to assemble and interpret the statistics related to books and periodicals. In the early 1970s, late 60s and early 1970s, Eugene Garfield publicly described the impact factor, a way of measuring the yearly impact of a journal by taking the total count of citations to articles in one year, the impact year, and dividing it by the total count of articles in the previous two years. Then, issues associated to higher education in general, research and impact metrics began to take off in the mid-70s and largely in the 80s. Everything that's going to be discussed today really has this assumption, that science is conceived as a system of communication. That is, what we report in the literature is the science that we know is done, and the knowledge that we build up. This is based on the norm of communism, highlighted by Robert K. Merton in The Norms and Structure of Science, which simply says that the idea that the substantive findings of science are, are a product of social collaboration and are assigned to the community. This underlying assumption is in, this area, in this entire area of study is that the communication of science and the doings of science are inextricably intertwined. And this is because of this norm. It follows then, or it's entailed by, other background factors. The need to evaluate science. We do this through peer review. To communicate and disseminate good science. We publish, organize, filter, and retrieve that. And identify important work generally by impact of citations, is measured by citations. The argument <clears throat> that the scholarly communication system is broken lies with several premises. It is a system that is largely based on a slow issue-based print publication model. It involves a peer review system that is prone to bias, error, and overload. No two peer reviewers, for example, may agree on the judgment they assigned to an article. There have been over 50 million articles, it is estimated, that have been published in the history of scientific communication. 
and it's too much for any peer reviewer or the system to take on. The contents, it contains content that is insufficiently described and hinders reproducibility. For example, in the methods section, not enough detail to reproduce. It leaves out important supplementals, such as raw data in today's environment, source code used to analyze that data. And it uses citations as a measure of impact, which is slow and narrow. Narrow in the sense that citations are only counted by other scholars. The proposed fix lies with what the web has to offer. Greater interaction with text, the article itself, not limited by page length, and this has relevance to, for example, again, the methods section, better description, more detail. Dissemination of raw data and code, faster dissemination, faster impact, broader impact, not just by what scholars think is important, and open peer review, which was impossible in a print model. Here's an example of interaction with text. PeerJ is a publication platform that was launched last January. It's an area that covers the biosciences, the life sciences. And what I have circled here is a comment that was added post-publication. And it leads to, it's a link, and when you click on it, it comes to this question and an answer that was provided by the author which was impossible in the print model. <coughs> we have a dissemination of raw science. For example, this is from figshare.com, where scientists and researchers in general can upload, among other things, the raw data they use to report and analyze their study, which will eventually lead to the publication. We have faster dissemination through open access subject and institutional repositories. For example, UK Knowledge, an institutional repository here, allows op uploading open access journal articles, among other things. Archive.org, an open access subject repository related to computer science, physics, statistics, and the like. The Social Science Research Network, uh, which, upload, which is an open access repository containing research related to uh, social science topics. Uh, and Open Door, which provides a directory of all these repositories among thousands of others. Faster impact. This is the American Cancer Society's journal, Cancer, as a Twitter account, which is very common among publications. And it can tweet recent developments, recent issues, recent publications, and it can have broad impact, depending on who is following, how those followers, how, that, how those tweets are uh, retweeted. And it's impact that's measurable. This is from PLOS. This is an article about altmetrics. This is just the top page of the view. You can scroll down for additional uh, metrics that are reported. But among these are the uh, number of times this, this, this document has been downloaded, the number of views it's had, the number of times it's been cited, both in traditional formal scholarly publication, but also in alternative publications, such as tweets and blogs and like. The web has allowed open peer review. PeerJ, again, allows its authors to open up the peer review history for the articles they submit. The reviewers can identify themselves or allow, them to remain, allow themselves to remain anonymous. And then you can follow the entire history of the review from submission to acceptance. It is symbolic that Bibliometrics, the term was coined in a journal article in 1969, and that the term altmetrics was coined in a tweet in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the key, the key issue out here is now that the web has offered us additional documentation of the kind of activities that scholars and scientists are conducting, should it be used to assess the value of what those scholars contribute, instead of just citations which contribute, which, which, is, which measure just a very narrow and well-defined well scope of uh, contribution. That's it.